now we are going to do the third type of um, sub questions that we can encounter. So it's the solving of sub questions. And what we need to do is to employ this strategy, which is one square root term per side. All right. Now, as you can see here, we have square root um, x plus 5. Then we have plus x equals to 1. So what we need to do is that we have to keep the square root on, its, uh, on the left-hand side by itself. So which means that we do not want to have this x here. All right. So the first thing that we can do is... Let's bring the x over to the right hand side. Now why we want to do this is because in order to get rid of the square root, we are going to take a square on both sides. So that's why we want to keep it to one square root term on the left hand side and that's it. Alright, so that it will be easy for us to do a squaring. So now we're going to do the squaring. So we'll do a squaring here. And we'll be able to see that when you have a square root and you square, it's as if there is no more square root. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, we will have 1 minus x squared. So, this is 1 minus x, 1 minus x. Write it out twice, alright? And we will have 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative x is negative x. Negative x times 1 is negative x. Negative x times negative x is plus x squared. And this will actually give us 1. Now, be careful. Minus x minus x will give us negative 2x, alright? And so this is the expansion. Now, why is it that I actually wrote it out twice? It's because many students will tend to make this mistake here. Alright, so 1 minus x squared. Many students will think that it's actually 1 squared minus x squared. And this is not true. Okay, this is not the same. It's not just a simply giving of the squares to this one here, alright? Because this is a subtraction, it's not a multiplication. So do not confuse it with your indices when you actually did this. So this is wrong, alright? Okay, now back to the question here. How do we proceed on? We will notice that we have to make this into an equation where one of the sides is 0. So I'm going to bring all the terms to the right hand side simply because my x squared term is there, alright? So I'm going to keep this as 0 so what will happen is that this is my original question and I've brought the x over and I've brought the 5 over okay so I will have it as x squared minus 3x minus 4 now for those of you who are not so comfortable with seeing this on the right hand side it's okay let's write it again this way and there you have it we have a quadratic equation so we can actually solve this by general formula or we can just simply use factorization where it's faster all right so we're going to do by factorization so we have x x 1 and 4 since we want this to be minus 3 so i should give the minus 4 here and the plus 3 here so trying to solve for this one i have x plus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus 4 can be equal to 0 so x can be negative 1 or x can be 4 now, many students will also make the mistake of ending here, thinking that both answers are valid. We have to check, alright, because it could be that one of the answers is not valid. So, do a check. So, we're going to check with x equals to negative 1. So, how do we actually do the check? So, what we want to do is that we want to find out whether the left-hand side of the equation, when we replace x value with negative 1, will it end up with 1? Alright, so what we'll do is that we'll say from left hand side, okay, we have x plus 5 plus x, right? And now for every x value, we're going to replace it with negative 1. So we have negative 1 plus 5 plus, again, this one here will be negative 1. And negative 1 plus 5 is 4, so we have square root 4 plus negative 1. Square root 4 is actually the same as 2. So 2 plus negative 1 is the same as 2 minus 1, which will give us 1. And it's the same as the right-hand side, right? So we write that equals to right-hand side. Okay, so we do know that this one is going to be a valid answer, alright? So this is okay. Now let's check the other possibility, which is x equals to 4, alright? We do the same thing. Check x equals to 4. Same thing, we're going to start from the left hand side. From left hand side, we have x plus 5 plus x. So again, we're going to replace every x value that we see with 4, right? So we have 4 plus 5 plus 4. 
right? 4 plus 5 will give me 9. Square root 9 will give me 3. And 3 plus 4 will give me 7. Oh dear, it's not the same as 1, isn't it? Which is the right hand side. So which means that for this value, this is not valid. Alright, so therefore, we are going to write down x equals to negative y is the solution. So, do not always blindly accept that there might be two answers. You always have to verify to see whether it is possible that both are valid, but it's also possible that only one is valid. So in this case here, only one of the question, uh, only one of the x value was valid.